And I was like, oh my God, because I'm like a Rolodex of Ink Master knowledge. I watch it nonstop when I'm prepping for it. You have like Ink Master trading cards at home. You like you pull out the stats. You're like, okay, Gion's here. He's noted for this. Yeah. Plus five agility. Yes, um, yes. <laughs> that's exactly it. No, and the producers make fun of me all the time for it because like that's, that's how my brain works. Like my hotel room's just full of like yarn. Hey everybody, I'm Ryan Ashley and welcome back to No More Ink, the ultimate deep dive into the contestants of Ink Master who also happen to be some of the strongest tattooers in the game. Today I am joined by none other than Angel Rose. So this was your third time competing on Ink Master. Yes, yes. Number three, what were the seasons that you competed on previously? So I competed originally on season 11 and then came back for season 13 and now I'm here again. <laughs> Third time's a charm. Yeah. How has it been for you from the first time you competed all the way to current day? I feel like Ink Master kind of raised me as an artist because I started so early on into my career, like before I even really considered myself like a full-fledged tattoo artist. It had been two and a half years since I got my first tattoo machine when they first called me. Oh my God. I was 22 years old, I was a baby. <laughs> and I, I tell people all the time that like that really molded me as an artist. It was like the best thing that could have happened to me. And then I got, you know, the chance to come back, made it all the way to the end. This season that we just did was the first time that I really was like, okay, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, I know, know? I know who I am, I know mm -hmm. what I'm capable of. No, I'm so glad that you said that. It's almost like you don't realize what the experience does for you or how much it changes you until later. It's hindsight that's 2020 and it allows you to really realize like, wow, that was so pivotal. That experience really molded me and changed my life. It was one of those things where I, I was like, what, like, it set me apart from other artists from the very beginning and that I was able to be like, very critical in a really healthy way of my work. I was able to strive for perfection in ways that other artists don't even know how to look at their work. Yeah. You know? I often feel like this like overnight sensation, like all of a sudden I existed. And that's how a lot of people treat me. And they, people ask me like how that happened. And like, dude, this was, this happened like in the very beginning, I was nobody when I started and, and, and I just like had to learn fast. And that's how I got here, you yeah. know? It's a tricky thing competing in the beginning when you're such a baby tattooer because who you are in that moment is it's frozen in time. And so the more you develop in your career and the more you grow up, it's almost like the entire world has to watch you forever frozen in time. It's almost like they're going back through your old yearbooks. Yes. You know, yes. you look back at yourself and be like, oh my God, I didn't know. I was so clumsy. I was so young. I didn't know what I was doing. It's charming and it's endearing, but it's also like, oh my God, that is... What a journey. Uh -huh. But it's cool now coming back for a third time because people that have followed you can follow your progress mm -hmm. and your your entire journey as a whole. Really cool, I think. Yeah, I think it's cool that you call it a yearbook because having done it three times now, you yeah. get com three completely different snapshots of me. And it feels like a yearbook. It's like it, they were kind of similarly spaced apart. Yeah. Each time I competed, the next time I had something else to prove. Yeah. You weren't gonna see the same artist twice, you know? Yeah, no, it's like looking at the school photos that are stacked on top of each other. You're like, this is sixth grade, this yeah. is seventh grade, this is eighth grade, and you can actually watch the changes happen as you progress. I had a style when I came to Ink Master, and then it like completely dismantled my passion for that, and all of a sudden I was like, I wanna do all of it. And all of a sudden I was like, I'm not booking any black and gray for like three months. By the time I come back, I have this like new like love for you know the styles, and I think you saw that in my first few rounds where you guys were like, "What? The f I would never guess that you don't do color." And I'm like, "Well, you actually said I was like Angel. I can't believe this. You are a black. I know you as a black and gray artist, and you said I got tired of sucking at color, <laughs> right? Yeah. And I think in that process, like I'm a very stubborn person. I'm a very like if I fail at something, I'm gonna try again until I succeed. And I, again, you see that through the progression of my Ink Master career, I guess. And that was one of those things that was the biggest one I got the most heat for. I was like, oh, you're one trick pony, blah, blah, blah. Out of stubbornness, I was like, I'm only doing color for a while. And then I was like, wait, I love this. I think Ink Master is one of those things that'll like take you completely out of your comfort zone and show you something else that you love, you know? I agree with you. The tattoo 
industry is blowing up and it's so celebrated at this point, which is amazing. Yeah. And everyone wants to have their own brand and their own style and their own voice and vision as an artist. We all strive for that. But one thing about Ink Master that I've realized is that since it forces you to do so many things that are outside of your wheelhouse, it allows you to actually discover things you would never take the reins to discover for yourself, mm -hmm. right? It throws you in these situations where you're forced to find things out about yourself, personally, professionally, artistically. This season we just did was like the biggest proving ground for me so far because it was so amped up in comparison to the other seasons. There were so many things where I was like, I have no idea if I'm gonna pull this off. And I just had to go for it. Dude, you know? I swear to God, your journey this season was like this. <laughs> it was like, angel, 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 angel. Like by the time you left, I was like, holy <laughs> Dude, who is this person? Like, I saw the cat tattoo and it was blind judging, mm -hmm. and we had no clue who, who did what. And I saw that and I was like, damn. <laughs> that is one of the coolest tattoos. Then when I found out it was yours, I was like, who is this? <laughs> Who is this? Dude, it was a proud moment for me. You like, will watch my interviews. I was like, I don't want them to know it was me. I want them to have no know. idea. We didn't know. I, I didn't know. <laughs> I think somebody else guessed it was you, but I didn't. From the very beginning when you first competed season one, and then you competed for your second season, how has your life changed? Oh man, um, this is funny to talk about because it's, it's night and day. You know, after after my first season, I like opened a shop. And then after my second season, that was when like life really changed because that was when I started like not being able to go out in public without being noticed all the time. And that's an interesting thing, you know? And it's important to me because it gives me a platform to inspire people and to, you know, build my brand. On top of that, I feel like I, I grew up in front of everybody. You know what I mean? Everybody's like watching me on my journey. Now I've come full circle from like being this like, this like superhero character to like coming back down to earth and like being human and people loving me for that. You know, being able to, you know, like come out publicly and stuff like that. Whereas like before I would never have done that. I feel like I'm just, everything's out there for everybody to yeah. see, you know? You grow up with an audience, Yeah. right? So how did you feel when you got that call back? Oh man. I wish I could like replay this scene because I was on this project called Ted Venture where like basically it's this it's this giveaway where we like take someone on a getaway and then and then you tattoo them there and it's like this whole thing super cool. I was doing the tattoo, drawing the tattoo for Ted Venture on the couch next to the winner. The executive producer texts me, "Hey, yes, this is that call. Can we get on the phone?" And I'm like, "Oh my god." I called my clients like, hey, I gotta, I gotta not work for two months. And they were like, mm-hmm, okay. Okay. Yeah, you visiting okay. family? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Like the way season 13 ended was like, everyone was like, rip off, <laughs> awful, you know? And, and they felt that way about a lot of things during COVID, but they was like, I went through my own personal situation with that that was like it was devastating but then when the fans found out man they were so upset there were so many like tiktoks of people just mad i get videos of like little kids crying so everybody was waiting for the moment i got that call right and i was like oh man dude it's happening it's happening we're doing it and dude, um, that's so rad and i looked at my manager i was like we gotta start prep i was like i gotta start practice it so started right away absolutely started. i'm a, i'm crazy I, this is why I- <laughs> Did you I, go down the list and you were like, traditional, Japanese, color realism. A hundred percent. You did? We cleared out so much free time for me to take on random things in, in my free time so that I could practice because like, I won't get caught with my pants down. I won't like- <laughs> Look at you, dude. No, it's the, it's, the, it's the right thing to do. It's the right way to do it. If you're playing the game and you're serious about the game, I feel like take a swing at everything. Make sure you know what you're talking about. So that first day when you came back this season and you stepped in the room and you looked around, <laughs> what was going on in your mind? I mean, I'd always wanted an all-star season. I don't know if I ever actually wanted to be in it myself. Okay. So my mind was just racing. I was, I was so shocked. I've competed with a lot of the people that were on this season before. Oh man, I can't tell you how many times, like I was so confident coming into this season. I was like, this is my time. I got this in the bag if i did it before and i'm that much better now i got it yeah you know and then i stepped in and i can't tell you how many times i was like 
do I got this? Oh my God, do I? Is do it, I oh got this? Am I who I think I am? Am I? I was like, oh, I thought I had this, <laughs> you know? And then it was just incre like increasingly more uncomfortable as time went on. And I was like, there were so many days where I was like, okay, get your head back in the game, yeah. adjust, because it's not gonna get any easier. Yeah, and it didn't. So what do you think your favorite challenge was this time around? The first thing that comes to mind was just our, our 12 hour challenge, like the last like big one I did, just because we were all acclimated at that point and we were all swinging for it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's that's truly what makes me excited about Ink Master is like when you have a room full of artists, they're all firing at their at their highest capacity. And then you see what happens yeah. within that. I, I think that like we turned in some of the coolest things I've ever seen on the show. That one was, I think, just the most fun to witness and be a part of. Yeah. I think that like 12 hours is a really fun amount of time to show off on that platform. You know yeah. what I mean? I, I think like within six hours, that's like even even me who's like, you know, faster than some people. I still like, I'm still usually kind of against the clock. Whereas like with 12 hours, like we were all able to plan something that we could for sure accomplish that was like really impressive compared to what we're normally, you know, able to turn yeah. in. It was just, it was the most fun for me. Like my canvas was amazing. And I just like <laughs> tattooing it. And I just kept looking at it like, what the f What the f is that? <laughs> like, we stared at it in person for a long time. We were like rooting for you being like, yeah. Whoever it was, we didn't know it was you at the yeah. time. I like both of your catty tatties. I like the psychedelic kitty and the caterpillar, but I loved Machu Picchu. Oh yeah, that was a good I one too. I loved that tattoo. The funny part about that round was that I was on that backed in a corner mode where I was swinging. We thought you were Everybody did. We thought you were Everybody but that was like kind of one of those moments where like I secretly like I get a bad skull pick and I secretly am like, yes, now I'm angry and I get to tattoo. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I get like kind of excited and I was in that fiery mode and I was so in my zone. I didn't realize that the rest of the room was struggling. Like the rest of the room had a really tough time that day. And it was one of the only rounds that that happened. Yeah. <laughs> and then like I was sitting there in my head, like preparing how I was gonna explain to you guys if you didn't like it. And Bob comes over and was like, you should check out the room. Yeah. He's like, it's, you're probably getting tattooed of the day. I was like, what? And I looked around and I was like, oh my God, I nailed it. <laughs> you know, like, you nailed it. Yeah, it was yeah. fun. There were a couple of good ones, but yours was just, it was just cool. Yeah, it was, it cool. was cool. I love that tattoo. So the four hour marathon challenge, not your cup of tea. <laughs> no, clearly no. not. So that one was, I mean, exciting. Um, what what we were able to do was really fun because that was one of the only rounds that we really switched drawings like that, you know, and like everybody did something different with the same drawing. Yeah. So that was really fun and obviously it's fun to be a part of, but like, man, a, a one hour challenge, especially coming off of a 12 hour challenge. Yeah. I was, and, and I'm against, okay, Creepy Jason, DJ, and Gion. They are three of the actual fastest tattooers I know. Yeah. I've, I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my God. And I, I remember walking in and just being like, I said I wanted to walk with giants and here I am. <laughs> I you're went like, into you're it. Like, this is the walk I wanted to do. Yeah, and I, I, was, I was nervous, which doesn't usually happen. And then like, I, I just, oh man. What it came down to is like, I'm not used to thinking in terms of like, efficiency like that, especially with someone else's drawing in my head. I'm like, I gotta do it the way it's supposed to be. Whereas like, you know, everybody else is like doing what they think they should do with it. And I was kind of just, I didn't have enough time to kind of like put my own like thoughts into it. I'm such a, I'm such a crazy prepper. And that's, I think what like makes me so strong in this competition is cause like I've done all the prep. I, I've done my homework. I know what's going on. Every, every drawing is like fully rendered. You know, lately when you'd come in, you'd be like, look at her drawing. You do that all the time. Totally. Cause that's how I am. And this was the one where I was just like, I don't know. And it just, I, oh man, it was sad. Like it was the, the second one was the one that I didn't finish. The Panther. Yeah. And Bob walked in and was like, you good? I was like, oh no. No, 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 not today. Oh, yeah. But at the same time, I, I felt it like slipping out of my grasp and I was like, holy dude, like there's just like 
There was this, uh, like a level of acceptance where I was just like, this isn't happening, you know? And I was like, well, I've prepped for literally everything else except this, I never thought that this would happen. I knew you guys were gonna be surprised, which was almost harder to deal with. <laughs> I was definitely surprised. I was definitely surprised, especially coming off with the cat tattoo. I was like, no way. Oh yeah, I'm just not, I'm not fast like they are. I could maybe get by. Oh dude, I'm not fast. Yeah, depending on like who I was up against, but I was up against those guys, you know? And I was like, this challenge is designed to test us in a way that I have not been tested, you know? I mean, not all the challenges are one size fit all. I, I was getting into it and I was like, I almost feel like this is this isn't a situation that would ever like happen, right? Where like you're like you have exactly one hour to like take someone else's drawing and figure it out. You know, I would never responsibly do that in my shop, right? right. So I was a little bit frustrated by that. But at the same time, I'm one of those artists that like I, I have I've passion for Ink Master, you know, and, and I feel like getting mad at the game does us nothing. If I didn't rise to the occasion, I didn't rise to the occasion. It's not the game's fault, Yeah. you know? Oh man, and I, I feel like everybody, everybody expected me to be in the finale, myself included, you yeah. know? And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> so close. I definitely expected you to be in the finale, but what I will say is what I did not expect was the intense amount of growth and the caliber of the tattoos that you pulled out this season. And it's not because I didn't believe in you, it's almost like, I don't know, you blew me away. <laughs> and, and that's not a bad thing. I mean, if you have this insane platform and all of these eyes on you, there's nothing worse than doing a tattoo or doing tattoos that your soul is not in. Mm -hmm. There's nothing worse, because you're an artist for a reason, because your soul is in it. And the fact that you came in and you came in swinging this season, and you did some of those pieces, dude, I think you have so much to be proud of. Yeah. I, by the time I was sitting there and I like I was doing the math in my head, like, okay, I'm getting eliminated, I know what's happening. I was like, I made such a show, dude. I was like, I pushed, I was like, my growth, if it was a, if it was a a measurement of growth, of personal growth. I, I got everybody beaten here. That was enough for me. I was like, if I'm sending a message that like you can do whatever the f you set your mind to, then 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 I'm content with that, you know? Yeah, I love that. Yeah. No, that's cool. What about coming back? Would you ever come back for round four? Oh my goodness, okay, well. <laughs> You're like, I'm not prepared for this, yeah, I'm not prepared for this question. I mean, the, the ultimate answer is yes. It's always yes, you know how that is. When, when they call you, it's the most exciting thing. Even though you get there and then there's 10 artists that are incredible and you're like, oh my God. You can't replace the growth that you go through here and you can't replace the platform it puts you on. You can't, re like, I have this journal that I wrote the whole time. And um, on the last night, I like reread it all and just sobbing because I was so, so, so like, oh my God, intense with myself in my journals. And the one thing I said was like, the impact I make here outweighs everything else. I agree completely. It's like the mark you leave on the world and the voice that you have and how you're using it, right? You said competing the first season, it was a springboard of your career and your shop and everything. Mm -hmm. But in reality, it's a springboard of the positive impact that you can have mm -hmm. on everyone around you, mm -hmm. you know? So what do you think in the future what does a dream come true look like for you? It's crazy because it's literally the life I'm living right now, you know what I mean? Like when I was a baby apprentice, which like my apprenticeship was rough, to be put on a platform where like, I remember when I was a kid, I remember like people were like, what do you want to be when you grow up? I'd be like, I want to change the world. That's what I said. The best case scenario is literally me sitting here on this platform talking about these things yeah. and, and me, you know, having the courage and strength to actually put that in motion in real time on Ink Master for people to see. I mean, Angel, your journey has been incredible. It has been an honor and a pleasure watching you tattoo all season. We were always so excited to see what you came out with and I couldn't be more proud. Thank Truly. you, that means a lot. I might cry. You did great. Well guys, thanks for joining us today. And don't forget to check out the Ink Master YouTube for everything Ink Master.